And welcome to Fox News Sunday Panel Plus with Bill Kristol, former Senator Evan Bayh, Liz Cheney, and Kirsten Powers. We didn't get a chance to talk about it uh, on the broadcast, but uh, a special and I thought very interesting interview with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. And they really came to us. They wanted to play, and uh, we'll get to Syria in a minute, but clearly what they wanted to talk about was the terrible uh, terror bombing of that uh, Israeli tour bus in Bulgaria, five Israeli tourists killed. And, and Netanyahu, very strong, very assertive. We know who these people are, and we know what we have to do about it. Uh, what did you, as a longtime Israeli watcher, what did you read into what uh, the prime minister said, Bill? Well, and I thought it was interesting. She said that he wanted to speak to Americans uh, this morning. And look, if it were a terror attack on Israeli citizens, they respond to those, and they don't really need to make a case to Americans that they're entitled to do so. I thought it was the link that he made in response to a couple of your questions with the Iranian nuclear program, that you can't let a country like this, the terror-sponsoring country, have nuclear weapons. And then at one point you asked him about what President Obama had said, and he said he very much appreciates President Obama saying that you can't tolerate an Iranian nuclear program, but Prime Minister Netanyahu said something like, you know, but it's not just talk. It's well, a he said we're all going to be judged, not on our yes. rhetoric, but on our actions. That struck me as a pretty forward-leaning statement. And he didn't say, you know, this is something we can deal with in two or three or four years. So I, I think there's a, you know, So you think chance. he's just trying to keep the pressure on for not so much a response to the terror attack, but to, to deal. With but interestingly regime. enough, uh, uh, Senator Bai, when I asked him, could you live with a solution that ends the nuclear program but keeps the regime in place, he said yes. Well, not having those weapons in the hands of an erratic regime is the ultimate uh, objective here. You can do that one of two ways. You can have regime change, which is less likely and would take a lot longer, or you can remove the weapons. So your question is, if you remove the weapons, is it okay? And it would be okay. That's pretty unlikely, though, with the course that we're on, Chris. So my reaction to this was twofold. Number one, if I was an Iranian nuclear scientist, I'm not too sure I'd be sleeping very well the next few days, because we, the, we the, need to say that because there has se there, seems to have been a, well there has been a campaign to assassinate some of these scientists and the the most likely suspect according to the Iranians is Israel. Correct, and so the Israelis' first response will be in the covert arena, whatever form that takes, cyber warfare, some of these other activities. But longer term, I agree with Bill. I think they're laying the laying the case, putting down the predicate for that moment when we arrive after the election at some point. Do you have to do something more than just covert operations to ensure that nuclear weapons don't fall into the hands of a regime like that? I, I was going to ask you, and, and, and you, you added it yourself, after the election, you don't see any of this happening in terms of a, a full-scale military attack uh, on Iran's nuclear program he, before November. He was so reticent to be drawn into our domestic politics in spite of your repeated attempts. An attack right now would be doing that big time. I mean, he won't even talk about the fact that he ever knew Mitt Romney. <laughs> correct, so. correct. No, I, I think yeah, it's highly unlikely. Liz. Uh, I think that the timing of the attack will, you know, as hesitant as the prime minister was to be drawn in this morning, uh, the timing of any action that's taken is going to be based upon the, you know, the perception of the Israelis, the assessment of the Israelis uh, in terms of the timing uh, and the development of the program itself. Um, so I, I think, you know, the election is a big marker out there for us. I suspect it's not as big a marker for the Israelis when they're thinking about their own survival, their existence. Uh, one of the things that we hear a lot about is the uh, potential dangers and risks that could result from military action to take out that nuclear program, and they're significant. But I thought that what the Prime Minister did this morning, particularly by talking about this in the context of that terrorist attack, was point out some of the risks inherent in an Iranian armed, uh, an Iranian nuclear weapon. And I think that's, that's what the American people I think actually fundamentally recognize and understand, I think there is an awful lot of rhetoric about we can't tolerate, we won't tolerate, but at the same time... Which I must say, in fairness, goes back to the previous administration as well. That's true. I agree. But I think you can also argue that during the previous administration, clearly the clock hadn't run as long as we've allowed it to run now. I would also just add one more caution, which is on the issue of sanctions. It seems to me that the sanctions are having an economic impact, clearly hurting the Iranians economically, but there's absolutely no evidence that they're having any kind of an impact on the nuclear program, on the pace of the development of that nuclear program. Kirsten. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I just I guess I have to agree with what everyone has said, that it's definitely nothing will happen until after the election. And the administration has thus far wanted to focus exclusively on sanctions. And they'll just and they have argued that they think that they're working, um, though. I think Liz hits on the important point that, you know, what are they're working in terms of economics? But are they working in terms of stopping this program? And there's no evidence that they are. So um, but it, but the administration's not going to do anything different until after the election. Bill, I mean, one, one other final thing here. Uh, 
the Israelis may have an election pretty soon, too. His coalition, big uh, unity coalition, fell apart. And there's talk that although Netanyahu could stay in power if, the, if his majority holds till October of 2013, that in fact he might call some election, he might call national elections in, Octo in January or February. Yeah, I, I don't have any great insight into that, but I would say I'm less certain than apparently, or less even inclined to think than everyone else on the panel, that Israel will necessarily not act over the next two, three, four months. I think that's their, they'll have to make a judgment about what they can tolerate in terms of various zones of immunity being crossed into by the Iranian nuclear program. Although, I don't, I don't think President Barack, Obama has much interest in acting in the next Wasn't it Ehud Barak who talked about the zones of immunity? And he's now backing away from that and saying, well, it's not weeks, but it's not years either. I mean, right. he, he's, he fudged that up a little bit. Right. I mean, look, I don't know. No one knows, and I suppose. But I, I just think there's the, the, the degree to which Netanyahu and the other senior members of the Israeli government have a sense of urgency about this shouldn't be underestimated, I think. Thank you all, panel. Uh, check in with us throughout the week. Uh, let us know what you thought about this discussion or what we had to say on the show. Check in with us at foxnewsunday.com, and we'll see you right back here next Sunday.